In today's video, I'm going to show you how to transform your boring Prada image into a professional looking 3D render like Prada photo shoot using AI. Creating Prada photo used to be hard and expensive. You need to find models, hire photographers, book a studio, spend a lot of money and wait for weeks to get the final results. Now with AI, it's much easier. You can make images fast and keep changing them until you like what you see. I'll show you my process that will save you time and money. It allows you to have a say in every aspect of your final product. So there are two key challenges of AI-generated product image. First is the accuracy. AI-generated images can mislead on proportions and details. We'll have to make sure our images reflect reality and not catfish our customers with inaccurate information. And AI often struggles with replicating the text and design on packaging accurately. So you often get misspelled words and distorted design. In this video, I'll show you how to have better control of these issues. We'll cover creating structure layout with Canva, generating mockup using Adobe Firefly, and finalizing the image with PhotoP or Photoshop. Now let's get to the fun part. First, we want to create a structure reference image like this to visualize our creative vision. For this, I'll be using Canva as it is easy and accessible for most people for free. We'll be using this product from my client, Brain T, for today's example. However, in the next step, instead of this finished product, we're going to use a blank white pouch to create the mock-up structure. You'll understand why later in the process. Most people should be able to get this image from their manufacturer or you can find one with similar size and shapes to the actual product on the internet. Once we have that, we can move on to the next step. Open Canva and create a new design. I'm using a square canvas here, but you can choose what works best for your product. First, we change the background to a color. Next, I drag in the plain product packaging to the canvas. This image has a shadow attached, so we want to remove that. While selecting the image, we click Edit Image, and under Magic Studio, we click BG Remover to remove the background and keep only the product package. We can then adjust the size and position the package. Next, under Elements, let's add Design Elements and arrange the placements. Here you can search for and choose from many of the design elements within the element library. When selecting the graphics, we want to focus on simple designs with clear defined shapes that closely match your vision. Remember that the overall shape of the elements are more important than the texture and details of the objects. Also, we want to make sure that the object proportions in relations to each other are accurate. We have to make sure that the proportions of each element naturally fit within the canvas. I would also suggest using a variety of colors to clearly define the structure of your design. And this will help AI to distinguish different elements. I think the layout is good enough. Let's download for our next step. Next, we want to use Adobe Firefly to generate a mockup image. So we come to firefly.adobe.com, click generate, and we will then land on the dashboard. On the left-hand side, under general settings, we get to choose different models. So of course, we choose the, we choose the newest one. For aspect ratio, I'm going to pick square for this one. For content type, this time we'll select photo for product photography. Under structure, you can upload an image or choose from their gallery. Let's upload the reference image we created on Canva. This reference image will be used to influence and match the structure of the generated images. After uploading the image, you will see a string slider and it allows you to adjust how closely the generated images should match the structure of the reference image. I would start with the maximum setting to ensure the proportions and layout closely match my structure image. But you can lower the strings if you find it overly restrict the AI's creativity or results in incoherent images. Under style reference, you can upload a style reference image to influence the style of the generated image or choose from Adobe Firefly's presets. For this project, we'll skip style reference and instead use effects to control the style to create more realistic results. Scroll down to effect, we can pick from one of their presets or specify color and tone, lighting, and camera shot type. For this project, we want to select hyper-realistic. For color and tone, let's try vibrant colors. For lighting, I'll select studio light. For camera angle, select none or close-up for this one. You can adjust these settings based on your needs. 
and they can be written as text prompts in the text prompt box as well. In the prompt box, you can see our previous settings are included under here. And on here, we can type in our text prompt. And as you type, there will be prompt suggestions to help you complete your sentences. For this, I would start with product photography of, and then describe the main subject and the relative positions of other important elements. For example, I have dynamic and high impact product photography of floating objects, a white stand up pouch in the middle, surrounded by a glass tea mug with tea splashing out, lemons, tea leaves, pink roses, and pink petals, dynamic movement with teal green background. Note that we want to describe the packaging as white standard pouch. Instead of uh, mentioning the specific product, such as a tea pouch, so we can create a plain package for customization later. You will understand later why we do that. After we finish prompting, we send it to generate. Let's look at the results. I think the generated images match the structure of the reference image pretty well. For example, it recognized that the curly shapes are more likely to be lemon peels rather than flowers. And it correctly mapped the pink shapes here I put on the top as rose petals and the remaining floating shapes as green leaves. This shows that Adobe Fireflies has a comprehensive understanding and accurate interpretations of the structure of the image. And it can also logically match the structure with my text prompt. I would say it did a great job of turning ideas into images. Next, if you want to edit parts of an image, you can click into the image, click edit, and then select generative fill to edit part of the image. Here, I want to correct some imperfections by selecting the areas I want the AI to regenerate. For example, I want the package to be smoother and have fewer ruffles. So I used the insert tool and selected the area I want to smooth out. You can also adjust the brush size, hardness, and opacity in here. Then we just mark the area we want to regenerate with the brush. I kept the text prompt empty and click generate. I think some of these look better than before. You will get three options to pick from, and you can click keep if you are satisfied or click more to generate more options if you don't see anything you like. Let's try to remove this rose petal. First, we click remove, then adjust the brush size and simply brush over the area you want to remove and hit remove. It removed the rose petal, but inserted a small green leaf instead. I think probably because it looks better this way. So let's keep it and continue. I think this one is good enough. Let's download it and see how we can polish it and add our product design to the package next. Finally, we want to take the generated image and add the design to the package. For this, we will be using PhotoP today, which is an online platform just like Photoshop, uh, but it's free and web-based. If you use Photoshop, you can also follow along. On PhotoP, we click Open File from Computer, and we choose the image we generated on Adobe Firefly. Now we want to select only the white package on this canvas. For that, I find that Quick Selection tool works best here for a rough selection. Adjust the size of the selection here, and use the plus sign to add the selection and the minus sign to subtract from the selection. It will guess which part you are trying to select, but not always perfect. So we may need to add selection bit by bit using the unite selection or subtract selection if you select more than you want. After the rough selection, zoom in and use the lasso tool to refine the details, especially where the splash and package overlap. We want to carefully select only the white package and be mindful of the selection type you're using. I won't be going into details here. I'll include some resource in my note in the link in my description below. If you're on Photoshop, then you're in luck because all you need to do is one click by using the object selection tool and you will get a perfect selection instantly. Once you have the perfect selection, click select and save selection. And we can rename it to white package and click OK. Later, we can retrieve this selection by going back to select, load selection, and choose white package from the channel. 
While the package selection is active, press Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl J to duplicate the selection to a new layer. This new layer will contain only the package. So now we have a layer of only that package. We can optionally name this layer Shadow and Light. Next, we want to drag in our product design here. We go to File, Open and Place, and import the design. Then we want to adjust the position and size to match the package on the background layer. We want to make sure that it covers all four corners of the white package. We may have to lower the opacity so we can see better. And then we right click on the image and choose distort so we can drag only one corner at a time to fit all corners. Then make sure to turn back the opacity to 100%. Now we want to load the white package selection again by going to select Low selection. On the channel, we choose white package and then we click OK. And this is how you bring back the selection. Then we press Ctrl C and then Ctrl J to duplicate the design layer with only the selected area. Then we can see this new layer with design here. Now we can remove or hide the layer underneath because we no longer need it. Next, we want to add back the shadow and light we have from the generated image. So we drag the shadow and light layer to the top of the layer stack. And then in here, we will change the layer type from normal to multiply. Then we can adjust the opacity of this shadow and light layer until you see your desired result. And this is how we create a professional-like AI product image with control. And also check out these videos for more AI use case. Thanks for hanging out with me. I will see you soon.